Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alan with Center Consoles Only, and I have Hunter Barrett with me from CV Boats. Longtime associate. How long have you been with CV? Uh, about nine years now. Nine years. We're on the 340Z, and he knows this boat very well. Over those nine years, how many 34s would you say you've had? I'm up to five. Five 34s. So there's a reason why he goes with this boat, and there could be no one better to speak about the 340Z than this man right here. So thank you for taking some time of course, to man. do this with us. And really what we want to do is just go over what this boat in particular has, configuration that we're seeing right here in the moment, and other options that are available to sure. your clients. So we can start up here at the bow sure. Um work our way back if that's good with you. Yeah, of course. So just going, I mean, starting from the beginning, I mean, the coffin box is great. I've actually had this in all five of my 34s. Um, for me, I do quite a bit of fishing, but also a lot of family stuff. So for instance, on mine, I actually put a removable backrest for my wife. Um, when we're just cruising intercoastal, there's a ton of storage in this. The girls can put their bags in it. But when we're going to the Bahamas, you're not putting the Yeti in the back of the boat because I'll put all my drinks in the back. All my food for the trip is going to go right in here. Oh, okay. um, it's, the boat's actually a little bow high. So what's nice about this as well is when you have the back ice down and we're deep dropping or something like that, you'd actually put all your yellow eye or, or smaller bottom fish in the back of the boat and it drains out the side. Hmm. Um, and you keep your food up front and that won't be getting all bloody. Oh, really? So that's really that nice. It actually separates it that well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, it's great to have this additional space that's stationary but still having the fish box underneath. Correct. And this one in particular, which I mentioned on one of the other models, has this little backdoor opening which you know the yeah. rare occurrence that we've we've gone out and caught a good amount of fish this little compartment has been huge because especially if you have a coffin box set up like this although you can lift it up you don't want to be doing it all day long and you don't want to be getting that warm air into your you know, fish that you're keeping cold so this little opening is perfect drop your fish in keeps that cold air inside drop it back good to go continue on excellent little detail that I don't see much other than CV. I don't think anyone has. No, I mean, like you said, just taking the time to use the electric ram every time, it's pretty slow and cumbersome. Um, it could be in my mind, but this coffin box keeps some sun off this door as well. So I found that this fish box holds ice a lot better hmm. with this coffin box on here. And just being able to open the back half, pull a new bag of ice out to put it on top of your fish or your food or your drinks, yeah. it makes things really convenient. That's true. If you do have ice and food in here, it's got to keep that area a little bit cooler. Yeah, definitely. True. It's a good point. Well, actually, up here, I think something we haven't mentioned in any of the boats is this little area that you have underneath the gunnels here. This is basically meant for storage. Yeah, so it's great for dock lines, flip-flops, uh, beach towels, things like that. Now that's, they, that's the area where the bow flares in the boat. So if we didn't have that, there'd be a lot of dead space. So we're just trying to make every inch of the boat really usable. Okay. Um, one of the great things at CV is the owners really take a lot of time to come to us and talk to us about, like, what can we make better on the boat? And they take that all into consideration. We try to incorporate it into our, our designs going forward. Yeah. So. It's definitely something I've seen with CV, probably more than, than most other brands, that there's every little detail that you touch something, you look at something, even the 450Z with that staircase going up you're holding it ah, you, that could maybe be slippery but you yeah. guys actually created an indention behind so it seems like almost yeah you guys can think of a lot of things but maybe can't think of them all right getting that client information and their actual feedback and actually taking it to heart and using it and putting it into practice is phenomenal you know yeah, for a company definitely. to do and we see it from the outside you know all day definitely appreciate that we're glad to hear it so, so what else we have here we have other thing up front, what I put on a lot of my 34s, the boat has a ton of storage already. And especially with the coffin box, you've got a ton of uh, fish box storage already. So what I like to do is add the additional forward live well up here. Um, you don't use it every day, but it's something that you can use a few times a year when you take the boat to the Bahamas for tuna trips. Oh, okay. Fill that with pilchards, use that for your chunk bait. Um, and then when you are fishing tournaments in the 34, you could have your baits separated or just keep something up front for the guys that are flying the kite up here. You're not running to the back of the boat every time. Right. It's also nice having the index because when you do throw the net, you're not trying to put it up on a, a higher live well. You can just Much hold it right over the deck there. and dump them in. Sure. So that's yeah, really nice and to if have. If you're not using anything, you know, ultimately you have Still storage. storage. Yeah, yeah, sure. Definitely. So very nice. Close that up. Then you have an optional. You have two two options. You can do the fiberglass cover or, or Correct. this. Correct. Yeah, so... 
it's nice to have the clear lid when you have the well. You can kind of keep an eye on your bait, make sure your flow is going, everything's, you know, if you sometimes when you have the, the solid lid, you open that up and you realize, oh, that the water level has dropped right. down. Now you always know the status of your baits, which is That's really true. nice. Makes sense. Okay. Now, then like, go ahead. The, you were... the rest of our boats, they've got the rod lockers on the left and right. Yeah. So you can fit six rods up to eight foot on each side. Um, wow. Keep those locked away so when you're in the Bahamas at night, you're not bringing them back and forth to your room. Throw them below deck, lock it up, out of sight, out of mind. Yep. You have a ton of storage otherwise. And as you can see, the inside of these boxes are completely finished, even went far enough to put their logo underneath, got their gaskets to make sure they have a great seal. Nothing is rough underneath here. You know, they go the extra mile on everything they do just to make sure that Everything on this boat is finished, even the areas that the normal boater, the normal owner will likely never see. You know, it's great when our customers come to the factory and actually see their boats being built. Things like the cap, when we have that upside down, we're sanding it, we're finishing it. It's stuff that you don't notice when the boat's already put together like this. But when you realize that we took the time to finish all those surfaces before we put the boat together, I mean, it mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. Yeah, for sure. And that new factory is definitely not not a bad thing to visit for no, anyone that no, enjoys no. boats. Yeah, it's so a great experience. we always have a good time passing by there and pretty much find any excuse to just swing by and say hello. So, all right. So, so going back, uh, we've got the 34 console. This is also in our 32.2, the new Z. And it's got the sliding door. A lot of people ask us why we don't do the side doors. Like, why do we do the front entries? For us, on a rough day, which is honestly what we build our boats for, is rough, you know, tournament fishermen, things like that. Trying to get in those side doors. Oftentimes, you find yourself having to try to sit down and scoot into them. This, mm -hmm. you can walk right in. Um, it's a, a lot easier to put things like bigger kites. Uh, we can even squeeze kites with a helium balloon on there into that front entry where you're okay. not going to be able to put that in a side door. True. Um, and you can maximize the rod storage on, alongside the console. Correct. Which for me, is the best place for those rods to live if you're not actually using them. Out of the way, they're stable. They're not bouncing around. Obviously, you don't want them in the gunnels. Even up top in the rocket launcher, they're kind of bouncing. That is a, a nice center of gravity to uh, to keep your rod. So being able to maximize that for me is is massive. And I love how you guys put that little angle on it so that no water you know sits there. Definitely. Um, always stays clean. Gives it a nice cosmetic look and feel. Beautiful console. Thank you. Then, obviously, great access to the rigging, your electronics, your switches yeah kind of what we're known for um that'll be all your electrical right there we try to not hide things all over the boat you've got electrical in one place and plumbing in another so you know exactly where to go you're not searching all over the boat for where's this switch where's this fuse it's going to be right there makes sense all right very good moving right along i see you have a key west style t-top hard top on this one we do um you know a lot of customers ask don't we get more shade with the full top I mean, the truth is not really. So it really comes down to an aesthetic choice, what the customer is more comfortable, what they like better. Because in reality, you're going to get about the same amount of shade out of this Key West top and you get way more rod storage. Yeah. So like you were just saying, I don't even put rods in the back of the, the hard top anymore. Everything's going on the sides of the console and the back of the leaning post. Right. So. Perfect. And you guys have three different types you have of hard top. You have the Key West, you have the standard, this rectangle, and then you have an, an oversized. Yeah, okay. correct. And that'll go, the pipe work will come to the, the leaning post. And we do that in more of our LE versions. That's going to hang off about another foot to cover a rear-facing seat. Okay. And then whoever's spending time in the cockpit. Okay. That's a nice. Uh, shade is always good. Yeah. Uh, once you get a lot of sun, you get tired of that after a while. So a little extra shade is always nice. All right. So let's no, step into the helm. Are you at no, it just really comes down to what the customer wants. I mean, we, we started off building boats for hardcore fishermen, but... You know, we can accommodate a bunch of different types of boaters. And if you don't want to have anything to do with fishing, but you like a, a solid boat that's not going to have a bunch of stuff that's going to break, that you can take your family offshore to the Bahamas, be super safe, I mean, we can build that for you too. Okay. So, Yeah, like we keep saying, you know, the CB boat is not a boat that sits at a dealership. Each boat is built customized to the owner's wants and needs, depending what they like from, you know, color combination to electronics to pretty much any detail how they want their boxes configured and um that's why you know it's unique and special for each you know building a boat like that i remember you know doing it with my family back in the day and it's a it's a special feeling and you know it's yeah. built just exactly how you like it you're not 
compromising anything. You know, it's exactly what you want, what you need, and uh, built for what you use it for. with Definitely. Your family, you know, so this looks really nice. I like this, this like matte black Edson wheel that I'm yeah. uh, seeing more and more with that kind of carbon fiber look and the very clean fun. look. And it's like you said. So our customer came in, sat down with us, spec'd out where he wanted everything laid out on this console. We don't just say, hey, this is where you're going to get this. This is where you're going to get that. Said, you know, a lot of thought goes into, you know, I want to have my joystick on the right side of the wheel. I want to have my mm -hmm. grid remote to the left. Um, on the 34, we can fit two 16-inch and still have some room for a VHF, obviously. Um, quite a bit on that console. Yeah. yeah, there's quite a bit of room there. And what is that material there? Is that like a carbon fiber, like... Yes, yeah, carbon like a, fiber wrap, um, and we can do it in matte black, some different colors. You know, a lot of our customers are repeat customers. Mm -hmm. So kind of what they're looking for is just something a little different on every boat. For instance, myself with the five different ones, you want to change something <laughs> up a little bit every time. Sure. And stuff like that just kind of personalizes the boat. Yeah. No, it looks beautiful. All the black that they did here, and this one specifically looks, you know, really nice. Your control for your Garmin down here is comfortable. Uh, with the touchscreen units, obviously, when you're in a little bit of chop, it sometimes gets difficult to maneuver through it. So having that little joystick down there makes it a little bit easier and lets you control that. So it's comfortable on that left side and got JL audio everywhere. Like you see on all the CVs, which, you know, we absolutely love. Yep. You know, those guys have been great all the way through from the product to just everyone involved in that, in that company. Um, Optimus 360, I see over there on the right side. So this is, you know, very well rigged out a 340z right here and that's customary to the cvs the rock rocker switches underneath um the steering wheel kind of has a plexi there that <clears throat> protects it from water i imagine and kind of you know maybe a knee to the to one of your switches yeah um but also keeps it very accessible and that plexi lets you you know gives you the visibility to see everything you need yep so you know i get a lot of questions a lot of the customers that haven't had cb cvs before they always ask why they have to have that top piece of plexi over the electronics. Um, we were just in Louisiana about a month ago on a 39 CV there, uh, Mo and Eric Newman with Journey South Outfitters. It was probably six to eight that day, and we had an 80 mile run. Oh, God. Um, you know, what was nice was we put all of our cell phones, wallets, shut that plexi. It's all out of the weather. Uh, you can run everything from the grid remote, all that staying dry. Yesterday, when we ran the boats up here, torrential storms, um, being able to throw my cell phone and car keys in there so I can see, you know, I'm still seeing if I'm getting calls or texts, but I got that shut because that wind was blowing in from the side. I mean, if you would have had regular touch screens, they would have been going haywire. Whatever you had in there would have been getting wet. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really nice to have day in and day out. Yeah, it's definitely nice to have that protection. That's lockable, I imagine. Correct. So yeah. you get a little bit of security on top of it. Definitely. All right. Very nice. Yeah, the consoles of CVs, you know, there's only so, so many things you can do with a console, but, you know, you guys always seem to do it nice, and everyone I see is nice in a different way, so it's, it's refreshing, and it brings a lot of ideas to, to my head when I see how different people do things, and I always enjoy seeing that, especially from, you know, guys like yourself that have had several of the same model, and, and learning why you go with it and how you set it up is always interesting. You know, I think, you know, a regular person can learn a lot from that, and I think that's a lot of what we do, we learn from, from others and get a lot of ideas from that. And hopefully the people at home do as well. And, and real quick, during this, if you guys haven't asked any questions in the comment section right now, you can comment your questions and we're going to ask Hunter right now before we actually shut this thing down. we got a little bit more to go, but just wanted to remind you. So let's make our way to the leaning post. So leaning post, you see in a lot of our boats, this is called our captain's edition leaning post. Um, what's really nice, you have... You know, a lot of people have traditionally LeBrock style chairs, mm -hmm. but having the storage underneath the seat so you can throw your bags and stuff you need to get access to a That's lot. a lot of storage. It's really nice. Yeah, it's quite a bit in there. Um, and then on the back, of course, kind of what we're known for as well on these leaning posts, you've got a leader dispenser and some storage on one side. You've got tackle trays on another side. It's set up with a cutting board on top. Like customers are always worried about messing up their boat. We've got this silicone in a place. So after a couple of years, if you've really used it hard, we just cut it out and replace it with a new piece. Oh, so idea. you don't have to worry about using it. Everything in these boats are built to use, not just look good at a boat show. Right. Uh, frigid Rigid underneath, it's on a locking pin. Just unlock that and it'll slide out. Ton of cooler wow. space. It's a massive cooler. 
you know, enough for six to eight people on a, a two day trip typically before you have to refill it. So that's pretty nice. Depending on how much your friends drink, of course. Of course. And these models also, you can do the rear, the stationary bench seat. We can. Percent, which so, is an option. Obviously, you guys, I'm sure you've seen the stationary bench seat. It doesn't go anywhere. Also has a cooler underneath. This one in particular, um, I, I like because you can, you know, use it as a seat just the same. But when you're going to do some fishing, you know, you, you utilize all this extra cockpit space. Definitely. Which is extremely nice. So what other what other configurations or options are possible here so, um, besides besides that? Because that's something the, I think we haven't talked about in, in any of the boats. So one of the things Ralph just came up with at the request of a client wasn't going to be doing a lot of fishing. He was one of those customers that get rid of every rod holder on the boat and didn't need the live well. So actually what we did here was cut in a rear seat that was actually it's a rear couch that's molded into this area. Oh, wow. So we can turn the 34 into a true LE now. Like you were just talking about, we'll do the rear facing seat there. And then this seat would come up to about midway where the, the live well would be. And it was just a really comfortable, nice, secure couch that you're going to, you know, don't need your bean bags, don't need to throw them yeah. in the boat like a fisherman. You've got a nice, uh, dedicated seat in the back oh, of the so boat. a nice cruising center console for your family, friends. And, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of people that don't fish at all. They want the quality of a CV, but they're, they're not interested in the fishing. Exactly. So that's, that, that'll be a cool, cool little option there. That being said, if you're going to fish... Like this is what we use for our main, or I use personally as my main kill box mm -hmm. when we are out fishing. Um, you can fit about a dozen 50-pound yellowfins in there. Uh, you can fit a 50-pound wahoo without bending it. So it's it's really nice. It's a big box. A dozen 50-pound yellowfin, is that what you said? Yes, sir. I know from experience. I can pretty much tell you I do not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one day, hopefully, I do get the opportunity. That's fantastic, man. That's a lot so, of fish. Doors all insulated. Obviously, we have extra insulation around the box. If you guys can't see it there, and maybe Anthony can come around, but that box goes well up underneath the leaning post, so it's a, it's a massive fish box. And that's what people don't realize, especially when they're looking at the, the boats online, is that it actually goes up underneath the deck, like you're just yeah. saying. Yeah. All righty. So same thing, and have all your plumbing, all your bilge access right there. This boat's got a two-pump sea chest or a three-pump? Four-pump. Four-pump. Keeps going back there. Yeah. So he's running two wells. He's got the one in the back and the one we looked at up front, and he's probably got a backup pump to each well. Okay. And again, that's going to be all at the owner's discretion. It's definitely a nice setup. This is a 55-gallon well that we do standard in all the 34s. And then you can add up to four. You can add another 25 in the corner sink there. You can add about 120 gallon in the deck there. And that's an 80 gallon up front. Okay. And under here, another fish box. So these More are storage, storage compartments. Oh, okay, storage compartments. Um, but what's really nice about these is these will hold two five gallon buckets side by side. So you can have four off the deck with all your gear. Like I'll have my deep drop leads in one. I'll have my wash gear in another. And I'll have two just for garbage. Um, so when I get done for the day, just pull those buckets out, dump mm -hmm. them, and I'm done. Or you actually have this entire piece that, that is removable. Correct. So, so it's quite a bit more storage space underneath it when you remove it. Um, and it's great if you're going out diving. You've got the longer free dive fins, stuff like that. True. Very nice. Well, the ability to remove that, actually take that bucket out and just, you know, be done with it is, exactly. is very nice. Definitely. Okay. Um, One more thing under here. What do we got? So, so Anthony, all right, yeah, you're... that's going to be your power steering pumps. Okay. So this particular boat, because it does have the joystick and it's from Optimus by Seastar. Mm -hmm. So there's actually two independent pumps and you'll notice there's only one tie bar. That one doesn't have a tie bar going to it because the motors are going to move independently. Right. Um, and that's why we're running two pumps right there. Okay. And this has the triple three hundreds on it. This it Is this what you have on yours? I've got triple four hundreds on my current 34. Um, these had just come out at the time. If I were to build when I build my next one, <laughs> it'll have triple 300 V8s. These yeah. are just been an incredible motor for us. Um, the whole shot, the mid range, the fuel efficiency, it, it's just been a great motor. What are, what are some of the performance numbers you're seeing with this setup? In so this boat's going to be run in mid sixties with the triple 300s. Uh, it's going to cruise anywhere from 38 to 48. 
And because of the step tall, it'll run that whole range, that 38 to 48, and burn about the same amount of fuel, depending on sea state. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're gonna with the with these new V8s, you're gonna be getting in the one one to one three range, depending on your load okay. at that that cruise. Very nice. And are you seeing much of a difference with your 400s compared to this? You know, it's a little faster. It goes 70 miles an hour. But to be honest, it's not quite as fuel efficient as these engines. Mm-hmm. Um, the old 400s are super quiet, but these just have so much torque. And I mean, for the customers that is jumping up to quads, maybe for or triples from maybe a, a 32, um, there's a significant cost savings doing the V8 300s over yeah. the 400s. Yeah, definitely a great option. We we actually put a 300 on on our on our boat. Um, and the power is just unbelievable. Yeah. You know, compared, we had a 350 Verado before that. Great engine, a little more top end speed, like you said, but the power overall on these is just yeah. phenomenal. Phenomenal. And so. the ability to have the triples, like this is really the reason I recommend to customers to go to the 34 over a 32. Mm-hmm. If you're a family, like I'm sure you do, we're back and forth to Bahamas a lot. People have taken off time from work. Um, you've made plans. You've booked houses, all that kind of stuff. If you lose an engine anywhere before, during, or on the way home from that trip, you don't want to ruin the whole trip because of it. You can trim one of those up and keep going. Um, And that's been a big thing with us. Yeah, definitely makes sense. And there's, that's a question we get quite a bit. Why go to trips from twins and why go to quads from trips? So there you have one reason. Twins to trips, you can one, you can run Pretty well with this, I'm sure, with, with twin engines, even cool. if one was to go down for any reason. It'll do mid-50s with mid-50s, twins. Mid-50s, look at that. All right. Perfect. All right, I think we got a pretty good overview on this one. Guys, do we have any questions from the stream? All right, we got a price question, which always is a favorite. What are we talking about? Rough entry on this boat and maybe something like this. What a, Sitting like this, what are we talking about? A 34 about? with triples, you can expect it. You know, rigged out when you, by the time you get your electronics and anything like that, you could expect it to be in the 320 to 400 range, depending if you do towers. There's, there, with CV, there's so many options. It's so hard to put a real number on them, but you're going to be somewhere in that three to 400 range for a triple engine 34 finished. Perfect. Guys, anything else? All right. Hunter. That's everything. Want to thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you. You have a dinner to make it to. So enjoy that. Guys, that's going to do it for today. We want to thank you for spending the day with us. Thank goodness we got some good weather. It's been a beautiful day, lightly overcast, not that hot. So we're going to be back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. once again, and we're going to jump on to the next. Actually, we're going to start off with the sea trial that we filmed today. I'm sorry, of the 450Z. Because of this rain situation, we've had to uh, make some changes. So 10 a.m., we're going to have a sea trial on the 450Z. Make sure to tune in for that. Thanks, guys. Head in touch.